Well, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and giving me this opportunity and for the wonderful hospitality. Uh, well, Korea and its people together, uh, one of the rapidly having developed countries in the world, uh, strongly supporting the SDGs goals and uh, we are uh, anxiously looking forward to the post 2015 to participate uh, in the leading role in this endeavor. Well, uh, incidentally, uh, Secretary General of UN Ban Ki moon is from Korea and uh, he's highly respected and we, we like to give him a strong backup uh, along with Professor Jack's uh, endeavor. Uh, Korea uh, has been and is still considered as one of the role models for poverty eradication and sustainable development. Uh, therefore, uh, I think it would be somewhat useful and meaningful to many of you to present a brief overview of our experience in this line. And hopefully, Professor Jack's may be interested in some of the features I'm going to talk about. Okay. Uh, I'd like to talk about our experience uh, for poverty eradication and sustainable development and uh, make some, some suggestions. Well, briefly, I make an introduction statement and uh, industrialization in earlier days and uh, the role of uh, science technology with R&D expenditures, human resources development, which we certainly need to, to develop our community. And then Semal uh, Undong, which is basically new village movement for the rural areas. And then uh, sustainable development measures uh, uh, we have been taking in Korea. And then uh, we conclude the how, what, what made it happen and how did it happen. Uh, and finally, post-2015 SD goals. Well, Korea is a small country uh, located between the giant China and the highly developed Japan. It has a long history, uh, about uh, 5,000 years. And uh, in the meantime, we have uh, several kingdoms and dynasties and the people lived uh, peacefully. Uh, as an uh, Indian poet mentioned, the land of morning calm. Uh, but uh, early in the last century, Japan came in to rule for the 35 years. Uh, and after independence, Five, five years, the North Korea came in to, to make a warfare. It lasted three years. So you can imagine that at the end of this Korean War, the, the country is really poor, one of the poorest one in the world. Uh, then uh, the president, Park Jong-hee, is well known as a dictator, but he clearly had the vision for the people and the country. Uh, he, he set the national goals in two tracks. One is for excuse, national security because uh, we're divided into two parts. And in that sense, uh, heavy and chemical industries we need, including the defense ministry, defense in the industry. Then to get out of poverty, you know, we need economic development, uh, which is export-oriented industrialization. To, to accomplish these two tracks, we certainly need the backup from science and technology and human resources development. He, he recognized this very clearly, and he put uh, much effort uh, for the science, technology, and H, HDR, HRDM. Okay. Uh, earlier days, starting from 1961, uh, we had uh, five-year economic development successively uh, for 25 years. And uh, 
major manufacturing industries have been developed every decade. For example, 1960s petroleum refineries and the petrochemical industries to supply energy, energies and uh, to produce fertilizer, synthetic fibers, engineering plastics for the mankind everyday life. Then 1970s, uh, steel manufacturing and shipbuilding. Uh, steel certainly supports shipbuilding and automobile manufacturing. 1980s, automobile. 1990s, semiconductors. Then coming into this century, we became strong in displays and cell phones. Uh, during this development, uh, we supported uh, strongly with science and technology. Uh, I, I will come back to this later. Uh, but uh, we uh, first import the foreign technology on the basis of turnkey. Just we are given the key to operate the plant. Gradually, we absorb the advanced technology and then improve and upgrade the imported technology by ourselves. Excellent engineers and scientists. Then uh, independent innovation of technology within the country. For example, product innovation leads to new industries and process innovation leads to the improved productivity. That's how we import technology and make it up of our own. One example is that this is the original site where we have now Ulsan petrochemical complex. It's along the seashore line. There's nothing much except for some lands cultivated. Now, it has huge complex. Uh, what about the sustainability? Th this area is very clean. Air pollution is better than other normal cities. And the river flowing is cleaner with fishes inside. And then we moved to China. You to China. Huge complex in Wuhan, uh, operated uh, by SK Innovation. Of course, joint venture with the Sinopec of China. Certainly, uh, the export volume has been increasing rapidly, starting from 1964, where we had only 100 million uh, dollars for export. In, within six years, we tenfold to one billion dollars, and then within another seven years, ten, another tenfold, ten billion dollars. It grows up. Uh, autonomously. Uh, to give you some ideas how uh, the economic index indices and R&D indices uh, grow, GDP, uh, 1963, it's only 1.7 billion. Now we have uh, 1 trillion, 316 uh, billion US dollars. That's the 13th largest in the world. Per capita income, from mere $100 to $26,000. This year it's going to be over $28,000, and next year we hope to reach $30,000. Export, as I mentioned, is starting from very low level. Now, last year we had $560 billion US dollars. Uh, and uh, along with this development, the R&D investment also increases rapidly. From simple uh, $4 million in 1963, we spent uh, $54 billion last year. That's the sixth largest. And the, the ratio of the government to private uh, investment is increasing. The, the private industry now occupies 73%. R&D per GDP reaches now 4.15, which is supposed to be the largest in the world. And the number of researchers increased rapidly to reach 410,000. Uh, this is shown uh, more dramatically in this plotting. You know. The red one is for the export and the green one is for GDP per capita, and the blue one, number of researchers. 
uh, after this induction period from 60 to 80, it picks up rapidly and uh, uh, we, we have a substantial investment. Okay. okay. To, to support this development with science and technology, we have uh, uh, Korea Institute of Science Technology, so-called KIST. It's well known. It's a national symbol of modernization. Uh, when President Johnson met uh, the President Park together in uh, 1965, this is the first time, Professor President Johnson offered, uh, I'm going to give you a gift. What do you want? Then President Park responded that we need a research institute. President Johnson might have been surprised quite a bit, but he was also impressed and to move very quickly to set up this KIST uh, after two years okay, with, uh, with the aid money. Uh, and uh, the Korean government made it private uh, with government funding and uh, made non-profit. Because of this private, uh, they can enjoy full autonomy. This is very important for a research organization. Uh, this is the scene where the two presidents got together. And uh, the originally, uh, they had 50 research pe personnel. They are all from outside the country. The, the president privately called them back with uh, substantially uh, high incentives. Now they have 727 uh, and much larger budget. Uh, the role of the KIST is brain shelter for national industrialization planning and reverse engineering mostly, the cooperation in industrial R&D, role model of R&D management and the incubator of specialized government funded research institutes. There are 27 spin-off uh, specialized uh, like uh, chemical technology, biotechnology, nuclear energy, and so on. Uh, they have uh, interaction with uh, many other countries and, or research organizations. They even have uh, ODA program. The Korea joined the DAC in 2009 and started to help developing countries uh, in various uh, areas. Like as in uh, International R&D Academy, they invite foreign uh, science and engineering students to have a master's degree and PhD degree. It's ongoing, very successful. And uh, they collaborated with the Indonesian government to set up a pilot production plant for bioenergy. It was completed two years ago with 2.2 million investment. And now the v, v kissed. It's on the KIST on the Vietnam, but they want to call it V-KIST. Uh, Vietnam Korea Institute of Science Technology. We uh, joint venture half and half, and we just started to uh, construct uh, the institute this, this month with $70 million. Uh, we are going to not only build the construction and training program, research equipment, and the consultation. So it's a full-scale uh, cooperation with the Vietnamese government. Uh, how, how did we secure the human manpower we needed for the development? Okay. First of all, there were many, quite a few, uh, quite a number of uh, Korean students uh, working uh, in the United States and some of the European countries. We called them back and reverse brain power forms intellectual groups in various sectors. And the universities uh, number has been increasing continuously. Now we have more than 200 four-year colleges and universities. And uh, enrollment percentage is extremely high, probably one of the highest. 75% of high school graduates go to the university. And uh, usually the science and the engineering schools attract the top class of students. And they, they can create uh, a, an excellent manpower pool. 
And uh, the science technology institutes have been established, like it's KAIST, it's similar to the COPE in Brazil, COPE, and uh, GIST, DIGIST, and then even science high schools, schools for talented students, the Meister high schools, all kinds of programs we uh, establish. Uh, this, is, this is new aspect. Uh, with this industrialization, the quality of life in urban areas has been improved a great deal. On the other hand, the life in the rural areas uh, does not catch up uh, the lifestyle in urban areas. So the President Park Jung-hee, uh, he has been in power for nine years by this time, initiated the uh, Undong, which is rural reconstruction campaign, uh, it's concerned with the spirit of we can do it. Persuade the people to believe we can do it. Uh, it, it it's, uh, it's not only a physical but a mental mentality of the people in villages. Okay? And working principles of diligence, self-help, self-help. Without self-help, there is no way. And cooperation. And the aim is better life, not only of individuals, but also the people as a whole uh, in the trans, trans, traditional communities. Developed uh, several stages. And in the meantime, uh, we were successful to, to generate a new species for rice. We call it Tongil uh, breed rice. And uh, the production rate has grown up 40% more than the previous one, and it, it solves the problem of the people of hunger. Uh, then, obviously, the, the quality of life for, in rural areas become as good as those in, in urban areas. Uh, naturally, the movement diffused out to urban areas. It, it, it's a very interesting uh, phenomenon. So it's a, it become, became a nationwide movement. And gradually, uh, in, it, in the beginning, it was government-driven uh, movement. But uh, the, the operation transformed, transferred to private organizations. And uh, recent years with ODA programs, uh, this leads to the ODA programs of Semaul Undong. Okay. Training of Semaul Undong leaders. According to the statistics, we trained, educated 50,000 leaders in other countries from 103 countries and policy consulting, so on. Currently, the focus is on Rwanda, uh, which, which has been so successful over the past 10 years. We started to cooperate uh, over the past three years. And then Laos, then next is Myanmar. Okay. Some of the scenes I'm going to show you here. It's uh, uh, members of the village, you know, move the cement blocks to construct some walls or bridges and so on by themselves. Uh, the repairment of the bridges by themselves. Of course, the materials are given by the government. And cleaning of the street by themselves. Uh, farming, farming also. And they have their own library. And then in the evening and over the weekend, they, have, they teach the youngsters and even the children, even at night, uh, it's a typical scene of a uh, new village over there. Uh, and then uh, we invite uh, many leaders from other countries you know, get, to get education and training. Now, in terms of sustainable development, uh, we, uh, we have been putting emphasis on uh, several uh, measures. First one is low carbon green growth. It's green car, solar cell power, emission trading scheme. 
emission trading scheme is going to start next year, January next year. And the Green Climate Fund we invite the Secretariat. And Green, Global Green Growth Institute, uh, we initiated it. And uh, we take the role of a bridge between the developed countries and developing countries. And Green Technology Center, uh, we are developing technologies and then transfer to developing countries. And there is four Grand River restoration, which was completed two years ago. The restoration of mainstream, there are four big rivers in Korea. Four, four of the mainstreams have been completed, but upstream branches are to be restored yet. Nuclear power plants, we have 23 in operation, and they're going to construct more, up to 42, then 30% uh, of total power will be generated by nuclear power plant. And creative economy, this is the current emphasis of the, the, uh, the current government. Uh, projects uh, mentioned about uh, ICT, yes, ICT uh, oriented technology it comes to this category. And then expansion of ODA. Okay. Number of countries with the major emphasis now 12 in Asia, 2 in the Middle East, 8 in Africa, 4 in Central and South America. Finally, uh, okay, what, what made it happen? Strong leadership and government-led drive, such as five-year economic development plan, Semaul Undong, low carbon green growth, and then establishment of a brain hub, institution building, reverse brain drain, with good plan and consistent do. Presidential pledge of GDP 5% for science and technology. Uh, now, post-2015 SD goals. SDN, SN's views of architecture is shown here. But we think that environment can be improved along with the economic development, that based on our experience. Economic growth with environmental sustainability is in the line of green growth, a new paradigm for economic development. Therefore, we figure that takeoff of economic development is the most important. And how to take off? We have to establish the brain hub first, such as KIST, KAIST, COPE, and then education and training. Now, industrialization with job creation, building the spirit of can do among the people, it's very important. Like Semaul Undong. Semaul Undong is propagated to many countries. In China, they also started socialist new countryside construction project, similar to Semaul Undong. Strong leadership and government drive, consistent government policy and strategy. Thank you very much. Okay. That's all.